etymological meaning of to wander, to err, to go astray. But then to go back to the new definition can be true, but this means that the new definition of subjectivity is still Cartesian, still in the Descartes tradition. Because Descartes was the first one in modern time, after the scholastic philosopher, to ground the subjectivity to the truth. And in this sense, as Foucault says, Descartes' subjectivity is a subject which can only found practices of knowledge, and not an ethical subject, which will be constituted true practices of self. And I think that this is true. You cannot, if you want to, if you want to understand the great shifting that Foucault does when he will uh, treat the problem of the care of the self we, we will now analyze, no? you have to first understand that, understand that this means a great shifting in the location of subjectivity. Subjectivity is no more located in a relation to truth and then into knowledge, eh? but is located in the errors of life, in the errands, eh? going astray of the human life, and Therefore, in a medical practice of the self. And I think it's right, I think that no ethical subject can be constituted without an uh, erring, uh, without uh, this idea of uh, a constitutive, constitutive erring of human life. Error, uh, yes? Um. What Lacan does to Descartes uh, to now? What Lacan does to Descartes to I to therefore I exist um, is not simply it's a, a slight inversion. He's just taking the weight from uh, truth and knowledge and taking it as a fourth step in subjectivity itself. That I simply don't know where I am when I think. So it takes it topological, it's not the same version, is it? Of course not. Uh, Lacan is not Descartes. Uh, as, you, as you suggested, he makes uh, a great uh, change. He, he first he divides the subjectivity, and then also he has to cope with the uh, Freud problem, the unconscious, etc., etc. But we, we are speaking of, uh, of uh, Foucault uh, and Descartes. So the shifting that Foucault does with respect to Descartes' subjectivity. And I quoted Badiou, of course, Badiou, as you perhaps were <coughs> suggesting, is strongly linked to also the Lacanian and Canon. But as far as his uh, conception of the uh, uh, how a subject is constituted, the subject is constituted by the encounter, through the encounter with the truth. And, and that's why. I think that uh, that uh, although but it's not perhaps the case to we should speak with this with him later. But we, we I had always always discussion with him concerning not the, the, his ontological thesis, but the problem of ethics. How can then if your subject is only constituted by the encounter with the truth, how can then you found an ethic? Which implies according to suggest, on the contrary, also a relation to something different. And that's why you have strongly, you know, you know how he founds that, this it idea of fidelity. When, this, when the living meets a truth, encounters the truth, then you have fidelity to it. Fidelity, you can say? Yes. 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 But then, my, my, when we discuss together, my Question I may mean, make, yes, but uh, where the living will uh, find this fidelity, <laughs> the force to keep this fidelity, if it's only found in truth and not in ethics? 
So it is another problem. Uh, but now it this displaces the problem from outside, from the outside world into the subject itself. But, but the Freudian version of the cogito takes the problem from the outside world straight to the problem in the subject. Yes. It's like we are wrong, the world is all right with this inversion. Yeah, right, but as far as the problem of the relation to truth is concerned, yeah. Yeah, it seems that uh, these are the two possible positions. Mm -hmm. the, the, the one who originally comes from Descartes, and this new position that uh, Foucault is, uh, without never making a clear theory, eh? but it, with a theory which is implied in his formulations. This is ultimately because they out of an epistemology. It's, a, it's an epistemological consequence of the of the of Descartes' cogito. Is that what you're trying to say? That, that these these notions of subjectivity uh, in their uh, relation to truth and Freud, he, he, Freud's and Foucault's still oriented towards or the byproduct or consequence of an epistemology, an attempt at epistemology. Yeah, but the important thing is that they look they they locate in another place. The yeah, subject. yeah. Then uh, I'm not entering in the details. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, that's not I'm, just I'm, I'm interested in this shifting of the location of yeah. the subjectivity. Question? Yes. <coughs> um, you talk, or Foucault mentions uh, not in the truth but in the errors of life, but both truth and error are sort of measurable things, that they're, they're knowable things. Um, is there any room for the non-knowable? No, no. For the non-knowable in subjectivity? No, the no, no. knowable Knowable. The unknowable. Or, uh, for example, re, you know, relation to another um, and, and how you might resonate with that other is not knowable in a quantifiable sense. But, but it's still a form of subjectivity. Yeah. You see how we are determined by the conception which links subjectivity to truth. Now you understood what Foucault says as the error he was uh, referring was just the contrary of truth, so a mistake. Not at all. So w when he says, uh, I didn't have the time to, uh, to quote exactly the text, but th then I, I said uh, the etymological sense of air. Air means uh, errance in French, it means uh, wonder. Eh? To wonder. So it does not refer to a mistake in a uh, uh, nosiological meaning but to an onto the ontological effect of uh, uh, wandering, going astray, I say, going astray, uh, walking, <laughs> moving. La so, yeah, a, a good example. So, uh, when he says the errors of life, he means les errants de la vie, the life errs. So, it's not a problem uh, of knowledge at all. It's not a mistake in the sense of the contrary truth. Is uh, just uh, erring in the sense of uh, moving uh, without without uh, knowing where and being misled, mm -hmm. going wrong, going astray. A, a good example. Are you familiar with a very interesting, uh, very difficult to define, uh, because it's not a, psy a psychiatrist, uh, Fernand Bellini. So Bellini was a French guy, so a guy many years ago, who, without being a psychiatrist, began to work with schizophrenic uh, boy, children. And he, he had a kind of a place, a community, where these uh, children uh, come, these schizophrenic children come, and uh, he was very, he was not a theorist. But then he de developed a very interesting idea, the idea of what he called Ligne d'errance. Uh, no, man, ligne d'air. Invented this word. Uh, what was his name? Uh, his name was uh, Deligny. He invented this term, I don't think it exists in France. The airlines. Uh, see. Oh, that's airlines. Uh, could be in English. Uh,